Like I'm warm right here and I'm what, 10 feet above it? Ooh. So this video will be covering the installation and initial testing of my new wood burning stove. If you want to see how this is made, I have a whole other video about the design and construction of this and so you go watch that if you want to see. But in this video, I want to make sure it's uh, nice and level and unfortunately the ground's all frozen so it's hard as a rock. So. I'm just gonna prop it up with some bricks and then we'll get some ducting and make sure the exhaust goes outside. So a few years ago, the furnace caught on fire in our house. Actually, I guess it's a pretty bad track record because the furnace that I'm building the wood burning stove out of it also blew up down here. But anyway, we realized that the cost of having natural gas connected up to the house is actually more than just running electric space heaters. And so we've gotten rid of the gas run with space heaters and it's actually cheaper. So now we have all this ducting that we don't need and I can use it for the furnace. You know, I'm tempted to take the rest of this ducting because I have a lot left over and just running it haphazardly through the workshop because ducting does look kind of cool and industrial.
Yeah, that's a bit of a smoke problem. Oh, oh. Once they start sucking up now. I believe once they just get that going, then it should be pretty good. Oops. Now that is really weird. I guess because of the 10 foot smokestack, the vertical pipe, whenever the hot smoke starts going through it, it creates so much suction that I really don't need much like uh, sealing around all the cracks. Like there is a lot of room for smoke to come out, but it's not getting out. Well, at least not that I can see. And I can barely even smell it. So that's pretty good. But I'll definitely still use some clay to, to seal that up because there's a lot of little cracks and stuff. Actually, the entire top part is only sitting on top of it and it's only the weight of those two railroad springs that are keeping it sealed. I really should get some pots and pans, but this old like Buick Skylark, Mercury Zephyr, whatever, hubcap will be fine. Now that is definitely a good, a good example of why you would have a vertical tube going above the roof because otherwise the wind catches it and it can blow it back in like underneath the, the overhang and possibly through the wall. Which is, I haven't insulated the wall yet so there's definitely plenty of gaps for it to get back in the building. So it hasn't quite warmed up the workshop like I'd want, but we don't have any insulation and plus there's still some work to be done to seal it up. Actually a lot of work for me to seal it up. So that's to be expected, but it is so nice to know that every little bit I do on the workshop will make it, they make this thing work better. And plus if I ever get cold, I can just come down here and it's kind of nice and warm. Although, I noticed that when I was up in the loft that it actually is a bit warmer up there than it was before. So it looks like some of the air is carrying really well up there. So it might just be down here that it's not too good. So that's really good because whenever I'm working on the workshop, I'm spending a lot of time in the loft, like cutting boards and stuff. Now I filled it up with a bunch of wood and I noticed that Sometimes it almost seems to get choked to where it, it, it won't. It seems like it doesn't get enough oxygen because then when I open it up, it just bursts into flames. So, I don't know. I do like how it lets the smoke out the back instead of the front. It actually works out pretty well because then whenever I open it, not a whole lot of smoke comes out. You can see a little bit but I see a lot more coming out the back. Because I imagine then the uh, suction on the chimney has gone down because like there's enough openings to, oh, that was good. And there's enough openings to uh, let in enough air to sate the needs of the suction. Now, because this is a heat exchanger up here, I might not be able to cook too well on it because this thing is really good at getting rid of the heat. So I might be able to cook lower temperature things, but I don't know, we'll have to see.
think this thing's on its last legs, that's for sure. But it should still work. I didn't realize it actually came off that other pipe, so that makes it a lot lighter. This was something that my great-grandfather had in his collection of junk, so he probably salvaged it in the 70s, maybe? I do not know. What I love about this is that if it doesn't work, I can just rinse it down with the garden hose and it'll be over. But if I welded this, I need to redo it. Gotta get the angle grinder out and be a whole pain in the butt. So I found it difficult to get the consistency right, but a tool might, might have been better instead of using my fingers. That hopefully will make it sealed at least a little bit better. All right, so, so I think that what I need to do is whenever I start this up, I need to help it establish the airflow through the chimney. Come on. So I'll close that, and now hopefully the air will go up to the chimney first. And once I get some good suction going, then it'll be good. It's got a bit of a convection going on now. So here's one good thing, because I sealed it up with clay, now I can have it open like this, just a little bit, and still no smoke comes out. So evidently there was some air being sucked up into the chimney through those cracks. And now, because of that, even if I have that door open, there's enough suction to make sure that all the parts have air being pulled in so no smoke gets out. So that's really nice. So now I can actually let more air in by opening up the front door a little bit. Oh, yes. It's a nice fire. It's a very nice fire. Let's do the test again. The, um, the hubcap, the snow melt, melted and then refroze over the evening. Now, as for the temperature, By the way, I want to say the convection of this is really good. It goes in that direction. Okay, so it's still quite warm at this height. Down here, it feels like you have your hand in an oven. It's really quite uncomfortable, but also kind of nice in this temperature this weather. Hotter at this end. I would say that this feels a lot like four or five 
1500 watt space heaters like like it feels like some space heaters would have this temperature but they would be outputting a section of like one quarter of the size of this so I think four space heaters are the equivalent of this which is actually quite a lot of heat especially just from some twigs and then you also have yeah you have a lot of heat coming off that because I use single wall for this where it goes through the wall though of the workshop I used insulated on a double wall tubing because I don't want the wall to catch on fire and we do have a lot of heat coming off the perimeter of this so just my rough guesstimate I don't know something like maybe maybe 9,000 watts coming off of this that might not be a good estimate but I think that like eight or nine thousand watts maybe like even like six or seven thousand watts sounds about right for this because it's a lot of energy coming out that's hot enough to cook on I think I'll definitely have to work on uh, cooking with that Oh. Oh. Look at those red hot for a second. Whoa. Holy shit. And this will be the maximum test of it. Now that the furnace is sufficiently engorged with fuel, I'm going to stand back. Man, that is setting off some heat, that's for sure. This has been pretty hot over here. Whew. I don't see any red marks yet. We definitely have some smoke coming out. So it may have reached the capacity. That's unfortunate. Or is that coming from there? That is very hot. You can hear it creaking as it's heating up. I put this over it last night because I was worried that the um, the wind could blow it. Whoa, that is hot. I was worried that the wind would blow in through the chimney smokestack and blow ashes out and um, cause a fire. But now that I have the different inlet thing up there, then it shouldn't be as bad. Oh, that is from the paint. That's what that is. I think. I am not sure, but man, it is hot here. Okay, that is not good. Yeah, that's a bit much. Which reminds me, yes, I did get a carbon monoxide sensor, so do not worry. Okay, so the ice in the snow is melting off very quickly. Look at all that. And it's no longer quite a uniform amount of smoke coming out. It's kind of just going everywhere, but oh well. At least it's going over it. It's difficult to see though. But yeah, this is all smoke over here. Ooh, that's not good. I will definitely need to clear out the area if I ever want to have it this hot again. 
And that's fine. But yeah, that's worrying. Look at that. That's not scary at all. <laughs> Looks like it's already gone down a bit though. And I do not see any more smoke. After that little stunt, the clay is dry, but it's also cracked. You can see those holes still have some clay coming through them, so they're still stopped up. That side is still there too. But you can see how the pieces are falling out. But only after like 30 minutes maybe, it's already uh, fully melted. Whereas before, it took about three and a half hours to melt the thing of snow. Although, to be fair, mm -hmm. snow melts slower than ice, I believe. This is no longer steaming so much, but I feel like I'm getting burnt just standing next to this thing. Just FYI, um, that has really heated this place up now. So I have the door open and I still haven't finished like sealing, sealing it up. So that entire side has like a four inch strip that's just open. And up there are still those three like openings that I haven't sealed up. I've sealed those ones up though. I'm so terrible at pointing. It's definitely warmer up here. Definitely sweater, but... Oh, I just realized. I thought that light was broken. I guess not. I guess I left it plugged in. Oh, whatever. I think maybe some of those lights have a bad starter. Yep, burned myself. So that is very hot, of course. You never know though, it's hard to tell. It doesn't seem like it's like coming off of it very well. But I do feel a very good amount of heat. Like it's enough to blow my hair, just coming off this thing. It's actually really working and, like I'm warm right here and I'm, what, 10 feet above it? And I can also feel the cold air coming from there that's just wind coming through. Oh, look at that. It's all melted. All the snow's melted. That side's still working, but over here, definitely it's cleaned up. So I'm very happy with this test. I think it's proven that this, this furnace is more than powerful enough to heat up this workshop it's it's able to heat it up kind of okay as it is now but it consumes a lot of fuel and is very dangerous because of i have a lot of piles of wood around it and it doesn't seem very happy with that much fire in it but that would be way too much for whenever i'm actually using it it has more than enough capacity to heat up this workshop once i get well even whenever i get like the first layer of wood on the inside that probably help a lot when I get it sealed up, that'll help a lot. But most of all, when I get the insulation in the walls, that'll really help. And I think this this stove, this uh, furnace, I haven't quite figured out what I want to call it. Stove, furnace, I think furnace might be better. Although I will be cooking on it, so maybe stove. But I think that it is already proven that it has more than enough capacity to serve the needs of this workshop. So I'm happy. And now it would not be complete and it would not be safe without a carbon monoxide alarm because I'd hate to think of how much carbon monoxide is in here. I'm so un uh, unconfident of how this is that I'm just gonna wear this. too bad. I might add a resistor on there because honestly it's it's one room. So I it wouldn't like like this is designed to be in like a hallway and you can hear it through doorways and things so I don't think I need it to be that loud.
going mm -hmm. off. Well, hey, maybe it's okay. I would have kind of, well, then again, I am getting very good combustion with this, so it's hard to tell. I'll just set it there because there's no good place to put it. But yeah, I'll probably do a video where I'll put a resistor on that or a smaller, or actually, no, a bigger speaker so it's less sound. And because um, that's just going to drive me nuts because it'll probably go off a lot from the testing and stuff. I'm really happy with this and uh, oh, it's nice and died down. It's only been like 45 minutes and I've already done that. hot. Although I probably shouldn't do that because that sounds like a good way to crack the metal, that's for sure. Ooh. That's good. I just instantly realized something I should have done when I built this. I should have added like a rack to hold hot dogs and stuff in there because that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Maybe not, that's actually quite a lot, but still, that is amazing. Man, guys, I do not know where to go with this because I'm filming like two videos at once and I have like a bunch of other videos like kind of stuck halfway through filming and it's just like my entire thought process for videos is just kind of jumbled up all of a sudden. Well, not all of a sudden, but well, normally I do my editing in my head before or while I'm filming. And so whenever I go to edit, I already remember, okay, take three is a good one. Skip past one and two, forget four through seven. I'll go through, I'll go to take three, tr trim it, do it, and it's good. Do the other one just trim down? I, I usually try to only film the parts that I need to film and then usually I remember what parts that I accidentally filmed, filmed, filmed filmed and I don't want whereas with this when I have too many video projects going on especially with this I have two videos I'm filming one giant video that kind of just has like a spread focus and then what I'm going to do is all the all the all the clips about the construction will go into a video just about making wood stoves and then all the parts about the testing and like installation will go into the workshop video this one but I'm not, oh, I'm not that familiar with like double filming because I don't want to reuse clips if I don't have to. That'd be kind of dumb. That's why I like, I filmed an ending for that video. Now I'm going to film a video ending for this video and it's like, oh. but I'm really happy because now it's like actually sweater weather in here and outside is not sweater weather, sweater weather. It's sweater, two jackets, leggings, jeans, and then like two gloves on because I've been having to wear, have I've been having to wear two pairs of gloves for all of this and now I don't really have to my hands are still cold but it's a lot better I would say that this place really got quite nice whenever I was overrunning the the furnace but that was also very dangerous and it was a test of course and I was very alert and wanting to make sure I didn't burn anything and I had a bucket of water ready but I still don't think I would go that high anytime soon, unless hmm, unless I really wanted to heat the place up. But I think that the good way forward for this is to have nice large logs that will spend hours burning at a constant rate with a constant temperature. And so what I'll do is I'll start going into the woods and cutting up some trees that have fallen down because quite a few have actually fallen down and I'll have plenty of firewood, nice big chunky boards, blocks, whatever they're called. Wedges, yeah, that works. 
I really like this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't really have like, uh, because I've tried to separate these into two things. Like this is such a cool thing. I'm really happy that I did that. I, I can't believe how well it worked. It was actually kind of foolproof how the suction of the smokestack, the stove pipe, actually covered up all the, a lot of the mistakes. Like any holes that I thought would emit smoke actually just sucked air in. And so then once I cover those in with the hard clay, then that just improved it even better. So I can have the front open more and it works really well. So yeah, I'm, um, I think I'll call it there. I'm really happy with this. And the best of all is that the air from that comes straight up, up to there and goes out like the parts where I'm going to be working because I've been, I've been slowly patching up the sides because there's like the area of open section. And so while I'm working, I'll have hot air coming up behind me. So that should actually work out pretty well. It'll make working on the workshop much more bearable. I've run out of things to say. So I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.